as you scale, like when you want to get to seven figures, like you want to be building out the virtual team and it's quite straightforward to, um, let's see if I can get a new piece. When you're scaling out your virtual team, like the main thing that you want to be doing is just bolting on. A can so when you hire your A player recruiter, say in here, then you're going to like bolt on underneath the VA. Yeah, so you've got your uh, delivery consultant here. And with every delivery consultant, they get a VA is sourcing for them. And then you're just building the model out. So like you're going to have your uh, general VA sitting in the middle, but that general VA should turn into like your head VA, which is what happened with uh, our team with Elton. And then now Maria took that space. And then all of the VAs would report to that head VA. So then you're not managing that anymore. So, th so they would just report to the head VA. And then you've got your delivery team in here. And that's what will get you from them doing two to three deals a month to four deals a month on average is because on average, you're gonna be targeting per month, one deal per VA. That's the ideal scenario you wanna to get to. Some months there might not be a deal, but under all of the tasks that that VA is doing, if you think of the omnipresence they're creating by sending messages every day, connections, tagging your database, like following up, managing your calendar, like building calls for your recruiter, all of these things, like the end goal is to get a deal per month from them, which will generate between five to maybe seven, eight K in terms of the fee. Um, so, you know, you can just keep bolting on VAs from there. And then you have your head VA that was like a, a general peer for you and they cover everything. And then you just building out your VA team below that. So every time you get a delivery person, you get another VA. If you want to still do deals yourself now, then personally, like if I was in your shoes, I would be having um, yourself, if you're still doing deals now, and you like, let's say you're doing three to four deals per month, you as the CEO, like there's no reason why you shouldn't have probably one uh, general VA and you should have two VA sources underneath you because that should give you enough leverage to not have to do as much of the sourcing and just doing the calls and still being able to do the client piece. And then I would normally have that VA doing the client lead funnel as well, as well as the sourcing and obviously the generalist that's managing the email, like in your basic operations and on onboarding. No, Mick Moore, we'll probably miss that with uh, Maria, but yeah, so like the uh, VAs will do like job boards as well. So Maria and the team will have access to job boards and work, like they'll be working jobs. So we're doing LinkedIn, uh, Canada database and uh, jobs. The email nurture different from the Alfred. Um, depends because I know me Alfred, you can do email. Uh, Gene, but really like what our lever system does, like that's our main hub. That's our, our ATS here has got every single candidate in that database. As you've probably seen there, I think we had what 35,000 candidates, but they're all tagged and say we get a job for a uh, job A comes in, in location A then all uh, we would do is we'd go straight into the database and there might be say 210 candidates that are potential for that. And then we just run like a message one, message two, and a final message follow. up. But in one would be the landing page link that we covered off yesterday. If you remember that was a live link for the job. So it's interactive. Um, and then you might add in, if not in the landing page, you're gonna put a video message off the job. 
and then just a final follow. But then you can just, what we can do on our ATS takes literally five minutes to shortlist the 210 candidates and boom, message one goes out 24 hours, message two, maybe 72 hours later, message three. And that's us covered 210 of the candidates. Then you've got the recruiter in the middle that's going to do the headhunting with LinkedIn. And then you've got your VA following up as well. But you can only do that with the ATS because you know you're not going to cross over because they'll see within when they're in LinkedIn, they can open up the little Chrome tab to see who's connected and message that candidate already. And then you're also doing, then the VA is doing job boards like still every day. So they'll get access to job boards because the recruiters get access to the job boards, but the recruiters are lazy as it were because they just want the money now. They're probably not going to add all of the candidates into the ATS, which is another reason why, even if your VA doesn't do a deal in that month, yeah, they're still adding candidates to your ATS system all the time that your recruiters probably won't do. They're not going to add every single candidate in there that might be relevant, but at least your VA is like able to like follow a repeatable, simple process. So every day, like they're adding candidates into the ATS. So then once they're in the ATS, when you get a new job in, that might be another five candidates that might be added to the next job next time. And then they're running the campaign. And then you can do the same rinse and repeat with a LinkedIn campaign uh, message. Text message we used to do, Robert. We're not using that at the minute. You might have seen on some of the uh, onboarding training, we used to use uh, a tool for that, but at the minute we're not using that. I think just because the tool that we used wasn't, uh, it didn't work anymore. But I know there's other tools out there, but we're still getting the results from everything else that's working. So there's no reason to add more complexity. But for you, if it's a bigger volume and blue collar work, it might make sense. So we all, what you're taking away from today, you, you need to get your VA team up and running because it's going to one, like get you away from your inbox, get you away from like the day to day piece, but also you're creating assets that could stand the test of time. Like I've managed to build out a team that's been like long-term serving and very loyal. Um, and I've never had to, I mean, like looking at that ATS system there that we've had four or five years, I haven't been in that for a long time because I don't need to do that anymore because I know everything, all the systems and the step-by-step -step processes are nailed. So everything's just done like a machine. Yeah, we do a landing page for each role. So we've covered off um, managing the VUA. I mean, just to recap, because obviously we're going to open this on to quite an interactive forum shortly in terms of uh, the Q&A. And we can dive into some of these days because I want to make sure we've got everything covered off. So obviously we've covered off quite a lot on day one in terms of creating our unfair advantage and getting platinum clients. And we should all have our sales pitch deck done or pretty much done with the design. We've got the better process, um, the better proposals to follow up with the process to convert those clients in terms of the proposals. Your aim now is to start getting more and more clients onto your kind of pipeline funnel and trail. You're going to get your case studies back. So once you get your case studies back, you're going to have video case studies that you can put into the pitch deck as well in written format, or you could show video format, and it's going to be good content to one, go on your website, two, to post out on LinkedIn. Um, and that's going to help you get more clients as well in terms of platinum clients. Then you're going to use that pitch deck to upsell your current existing clients into more exclusive retained packages. In day two, we've still, you've probably still got to go back into probably over the weekend, your vision, mission, and principles to make sure you're getting that nailed. Because in that worksheet, remember I shared with you your one-year plan. So you've got your goals and your one-year plan that you still need to go and do. You've shortlisted 10 recruiters. Some of you already got conversations. We need to be doing that consistently just every week. Plan out 30 minutes a week is going to be making sure we're reaching out to these recruiters and you're connecting them with the A players and you're following up with the job advert and the postings. You're doing the interview questions and the profiling, packaging the offer and getting your team set up. 
And then today what we've covered is uh, the hiring process. So you've created, if you haven't got a VA already, you've created the job board description. If you want to hire your second VA, you should be getting the next job advert out. Always engaging with good VAs. We've went through the screen in terms of the interview, the job offer, employment contracts, which I've attached. And the onboarding instructions is mainly going to be managing everything in Slack. So now you're all using Slack. That's how you're going to like make sure your communication is right with your VA every day and catching up with them daily on a Zoom call. And you've got your, your daily workflow reporting that you're gonna get back. So I'm gonna attach that in the training to make sure that it's everything's reported. But as you can see, once you hire your second and third VA, that's when things get easier because they can manage most of this for you. So we've covered a lot over those three days. Now, for those of you that want uh, my personal help, um, to grow your agency to a million plus in annual revenue over the next 12 months um, and start doing things more repeatedly. So landing platinum clients every week um, and recruiting and building out your self-sufficient team of A players and really becoming the CEO truly of your agency. Then what I'm going to offer you now is a personal invitation to